I recently discovered this scientific paper that independently tested the Aura Ring sleep tracking algorithm that's currently being used in the Aura Ring 3 and the Aura Ring 2. What makes this paper unique is that Aura does not appear to be actively involved, unlike other scientific papers that included at least one Aura employee as an author. In this video, I'll discuss the results of this scientific paper compared to my own testing of the Aura Ring 3 and the Aura Ring 2 over the last month and years, and also include updated results from a total of three other people that were kind enough to share their data. As always, I do not want to waste your time, so timestamps are in the description below and also on the timeline. Hello everyone, for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. Before getting to the results, let me share some important news about the Aura Ring 3. With the launch of the Aura Ring 3, many features were not immediately available and everybody that ordered an Aura Ring 3 recently got an email that the update that would allow for heart rate tracking during exercise has been delayed until early 2022. Aura actually provided the following overview on Instagram. Here they show the difference between the Aura Ring version 2 and the Aura Ring version 3. Currently, the difference is that the Aura Ring 3 has daytime heart rate detection, which only works when you're not moving too much. It has period prediction, more memory, and a better temperature sensor. What still needs to be released is an updated sleep algorithm, workout heart rate detection, and SpO2 sensing. These are all promised for 2022, which is on the one hand exciting, and on the other hand a bit disappointing in terms of timeline. This also means that for the next few months, the Aura Ring 3 is still going to have the same sleep tracking algorithm as the Aura Ring 2. So let's take a look at how good this is based on the scientific paper I mentioned. The first results are displayed here. This is the total percentage of each sleep stage measured by the scientific polysomnography device on the left and the Aura Ring on the right. Now here there are two results for the Aura Ring. In the middle we see the percentages as reported by the Aura Ring itself. However the problem is that the Aura Ring often detected the study participants as falling asleep later than they actually did, which means that the Aura Ring did not record this as a wake time. But in reality it should be added to the total awake time recorded by the Aura Ring, and the result of that is displayed on the far right. So let's focus on those results and let's compare them to the polysomnography device. As you can see the Aura Ring detected too much deep sleep and far more awake time. As a consequence it did not detect enough light sleep and not enough REM sleep. Now this already tells us something about the accuracy of the current Aura Ring algorithm and the issues it has, however there are more important details that we should discuss. But before moving on, let me give you some background on the study. The study was performed on 53 young people between 15 and 19 years old, and I will focus on 52 nights of data where they were allowed to sleep for 9 hours and wore what I suspect was the second generation of the Aura Ring and the scientific polysomnography device. I won't go into details, but polysomnography is the gold standard of sleep science and measures brain waves, eye movements, and muscle movements. Let's now check if the Aura Ring predicted the correct sleep stages at the right time. That is what is displayed here. On top we have the sleep stages according to the polysomnography device and on the left the results according to the aura ring. Now each column here sums to 100%, meaning that we can see what percentage of each of the actual sleep stages was recorded as each sleep stage by the aura ring. All the stages that are correctly predicted will be on the diagonal of this matrix, which I'll highlight in green as I'm explaining the results. First, looking at deep sleep, we see that most of what was deep sleep was correctly predicted as being deep sleep at about 79%. Most deep sleep that was confused was confused with light sleep. Light sleep prediction was not great, with only about 50% of light sleep correctly detected as light sleep. Almost 25% of what was light sleep was actually detected as deep sleep by the aura ring and the rest of it was about equally distributed between REM sleep and awake time. REM sleep detection was also mediocre with about 50% of the REM sleep correctly detected as being REM sleep. Most of the REM sleep that was confused was confused with light sleep and awake time. Awake time detection was pretty good with almost 90% of the awake moments correctly detected. However the aura ring did detect way too much awake time which was generally classified as light sleep but also sometimes as REM sleep. As mentioned before this was mostly at the beginning of the night where I detected participants is falling asleep too late. These results are very interesting, however adolescents do tend to move more when they sleep, which might throw off the sleep tracking algorithm. However, I actually also tested the Aura Ring 2 with polysomnography myself. How do these results compare to the results from the paper? Let's take a look. That is displayed right here. On the left we have the results from the paper, and on the right the results I got when I checked the Aura Ring. As you can see, both results mostly agree, with the Aura Ring having decent deep sleep and awake time tracking, however light sleep tracking and REM sleep tracking are far worse. For me REM sleep detection was especially bad, with only about 30% of the REM sleep correctly detected. Most of what was REM sleep was actually detected as being light sleep by the Aura Ring. Next, let's review some more recent results from the Aura Ring 3. First, let's take a look at the results from my colleague Stefan Reichel, who were both the Aura 
Horror Ring 3 and this EEG headband called the Dream 2 headband for 15 nights. The Dream 2 can also measure brainwaves and was specifically designed for sleep tracking. That is displayed here. This is a similar plot to before but now for the Aura Ring 3 using the Dream 2 headband as a reference. Again deep sleep accuracy is really good with more than 90% correctly predicted. Light sleep is less good, roughly 50% agreeing with the Dream 2 headband. However if it was confused it was mostly confused with deep sleep. REM sleep prediction is the worst out of all the stages, only 44% of what was REM sleep was also correctly predicted as being REM sleep. Almost the same amount of REM sleep was predicted as light sleep by the Aura Ring. Finally awake time was better with almost 70% of awake time agreeing with the Dream 2 headband. If it was confused, it was mostly confused with deep sleep and light sleep. Another way to look at the quality of a sleep tracking algorithm is by looking at its consistency. With that I mean, if you wear two Aura Rings, do they give the same results? To test that, I wore two Aura Ring 2s for several months, one on my right hand and one on my left. Let's take a look at those results. Those results are displayed here. On top we have the results for one Aura Ring and on the left the results for the second Aura Ring. This shows us how well the second ring agrees with the first one. So I randomly chose this first ring to be the reference but the results are basically the same if I switch them. First of all we see that only 70% of what was deep sleep was predicted as deep sleep by both of them. A lot of deep sleep according to this first ring was actually detected as light sleep by the other ring. Light sleep also shows marginal agreement between both rings at around 72%. Some of the light sleep according to one ring was actually detected as REM sleep by the other. REM sleep had the worst agreement with just over 50% of the REM sleep according to the first ring also detected as REM sleep by the other ring. This again shows that REM sleep is one of the worst stages predicted by the aura ring. It was actually often interchanged with light sleep when comparing one ring to the other. Awake detection only matched at 63%, which is likely because my right and left hand show different amount of movement during the night. To confirm these findings, I asked Katie Type A if I could also analyze her data, which is displayed on the right right here. Now Katie also wore two Aura Ring 2s for a while. As you can see, the results on me are almost identical to Katie's results, confirming that these results are not just true for me, but also for others. Katie also has a YouTube channel where she looks into different ways of optimizing your life. It's definitely worth a look and I'll link it in the description below. I'll be doing the same analysis for the Aura Ring 3, however one of the Aura Rings I ordered has been stuck at customs for several weeks now. Finally, let's put all these results into perspective. How does the current sleep tracking of the Aura Ring compare to other devices, both on me and on others? That is what is displayed right here. Now this graph contains a lot of information, so let me try to explain what you see. Along the horizontal axis we have the average accuracy over the four individual sleep stages, that being deep sleep, light sleep, REM sleep and awake. On the vertical axis we have the accuracy of the worst sleep stage. Now I added this since many devices compromise the accuracy of one sleep stage to benefit the accuracy of the others. Now this graph uses the Dream 2 headband as a reference and the better the device the more to the top right it is in this graph. As you can see, based on these metrics, the best devices are different Fitbits, the Woofstrap 3.0 and 4.0 and the Withing Sleep Analyzer. Here I displayed the overall accuracy for my Aura Ring 3 and the two Aura Ring 2s I own. As you can see, the Aura Ring 3 seems to perform slightly better than the Aura Ring 2s for me, though they're generally in the same area in the plot. I expect this might be random variation and not actually a better performance. This again suggests to me that they're using similar algorithms and sensors. Now if we also plot Stefan's Aura Ring 3 results in here, we can see these are very close to my results, which is a nice confirmation. Next, we can also plot another person's results in here for the Aura Ring 2, namely those of Max, who is one of my YouTube followers. As you can see, Max's results for the Aura Ring 2 are close to Stefan and mine's results for the Aura Ring 3. Again, this suggests for me that the Aura Ring 2 and Aura Ring 3 are currently performing roughly the same when it comes to sleep tracking. However, as I showed in the beginning of this video, in 2022 Aura will release a new sleep tracking algorithm. I recently made a video discussing a scientific paper release for that new algorithm, so let's put those results in here as well. If we do that, we get this plot right here. So on the bottom, everything is the same as before, but now on the top right, we have the results for the new Aura Ring 3 algorithm. Algorithm. And as you can see, if this indeed performs as it is advertised, it should be much better than any device out there. It's on average almost 90% correct over the four different sleep stages. So that would mean there's really a big gap between what are currently the best devices and the new algorithm of the Aura Ring 3. Now this study was performed by people affiliated with Aura, so the results might not be completely unbiased. Additionally, some technical details make me think that it will likely perform slightly worse than advertised here. Though I am hopeful to be amongst the best sleep trackers out there. However, we'll have to wait for a while for it to be released and given the delay so far that might be a few months into the future. In the meantime you should be aware that the current sleep tracking algorithm has some limitations as I showed in this video. The Aura Ring 3 also has some other features like measuring your heart rate variability and daytime heart rate. I tested these in a recent video which you might want to check out.
out. As always, it helps the channel if you subscribe, like, and comment, but that's totally up to you. Regardless, I hope to see you in the next video. Also check out the blogs and videos of the people that were kind enough to share their data with me and have a great day.